All right, so uh, let's dive into X chapter 19, yeah, 19. So, yeah, last week we was uh, introduced to an eloquent speaker, yeah, um, that was in the Bible, right? <laughs> of course, we have some eloquent speakers here on this platform as well, right? Um, we have uh, pastors from various nations coming in to share the word. So tonight, yeah, it's my time yeah, to share. So last week we were introduced to Apollos. And uh, we know that Apollos was all right, a Jew. All right, and he was mighty in the scriptures. Okay, let's go to Acts 18, verse 24. Yeah? Uh, since, you know, in 19, we still talk about Apollos. Okay, so we see in four. So a certain Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandra, an eloquent man, mighty in scriptures, came to Ephesus. Verse 25, And this man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the Spirit. He spake and taught diligently the things of the Lord, knowing only the baptism of John. So we see here that in understanding scriptures, though one may be mighty in scriptures, yeah, meaning okay that you may know a lot of scriptures, yeah, that doesn't mean we know the truth. Okay, a person that is so eloquent in words, in um, relating scriptures, does not mean he has accurately taught the word of God. Alright, so I hope, okay, we understand this. Yeah, we see many, many people out there. Yeah, they are eloquent, they are charismatic. Yeah. But do they teach accurately the Word of God? Yeah. So the Bible does tell us Apollos was only taught about the baptism of John. And he does not know about baptism of Jesus or who Jesus really stood for. Why? was the baptism of John 4 and what the baptism of John leads to. Yeah. So hopefully, yeah, today, okay, we will also be able to dive further in, okay, to what the Holy Spirit is for. What the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really about. Yeah. So chapter 19 will talk about Holy Spirit, we'll talk about speaking in tongues, <laughs> all right, yeah, we'll talk about laying of hands, all right, so this is the first part, okay, that we're going to tackle, okay, so we see, okay, that though Apollos, okay, was fervent in the spirit, they were zealous for the Lord, still, they only knew the baptism of John, Okay, there are people, yeah, in the midst of the body of Christ, they may be so zealous for the word of God, but there are still things, okay, that are missing. And if we diligently want to know the word, God will bring people into our path. God will bring good, God-fearing people, yeah, that will be able to teach us more of the truths of God. That being said, we too must be yeah, to the things and be a variant to find out whether it is so. Now, verse 1, it says that, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. And he said unto them, 
Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Ghost. So it is very, very normal because those who are baptized into John's baptism, they do not know about the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The most they know is about Jesus. Yeah. So now let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> Verse 3. And he said unto them, What then were you baptized into? And they said unto John's baptism. Verse 4. Then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Alright? Let's go again, verse 4. Yeah? John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him that should come after him, which is Christ Jesus. So, they are to believe on Christ Jesus. Okay, verse 5, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 6, and when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. Now, <clears throat> number one, we see here, if we have started, okay, uh, from the book of Acts chapter 1, all right, we know that the Holy Spirit was a gift that was being waited upon, yeah, by the disciples, yeah, commanded by Jesus Christ to wait upon the gift. And we saw that outpouring of the Holy Spirit, yeah, in Acts chapter 2. Now, let's uh, quickly just go to the Okay, now let's go to Acts chapter 1 first. Okay, so this is the promise of the Father. Okay, which uh, Jesus Christ told the disciples to wait. And, um, okay, let's go to verse 4 then. Okay, chapter 1, verse 4. And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. And said he, you have heard of me. John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Okay? So those who continued to follow yeah, Jesus Christ will know that there will be an outpouring of a Holy Spirit. Those who stopped at the baptism of John and continued only with John and did not move on yeah, to become a disciple of Christ they would not know about the Holy Spirit. Yeah? So that is why okay, they have not heard of the Holy Spirit. Yeah? It could be, you know, they came to John's uh, um, church, so to say, right? Okay? They were disciples of his and they came and maybe uh, for some unforeseen circumstances, they left. Yeah? But they understood a little yeah, from John. And they stopped there. Yeah. So, brothers in Christ, in learning the scriptures, yeah, we continue to strive and learn. Right? Do not stop yeah, where you think you are already yeah, there. Do not stop when you think that you are good in scriptures. As we have seen, Apollos was mighty in scriptures. Still, he lacked yeah, to present the truth accurately. Okay? And uh, Jesus continues to say, You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and other parts of the earth. So now, why were the disciples, okay, 
were to be given the Holy Spirit because it is a power to be witnesses for Christ. Remember, yeah? So, what if what is the goal of the Holy Spirit being poured out on the church? It is to empower the church to be witnesses for Jesus Christ. Right? So, if Chapter 2, we see that on the day of Pentecost, yeah, verse 1, fully come, they were with all in one accord in one place. One accord with one heart. They knew that they were to wait for the gift of the Father, which was the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Second, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing wind, and it filled all the house where it was sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like it is of fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, so here, okay, we are touching on tongues, yeah? Now, now what kind of tongues were they uttering yeah now let's go to verse 7 yeah and they were all amazed and marveled saying to one another behold are not all these which speak Galileans but how is it we hear every man in our own tongue where we were born Parthians Medes Elamites and dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Asia. Continues on, Phrygia, Pamphylia in Egypt. All right. All these who were proselytes and Jews, okay, they heard that the tongues were in the languages that they understood. And what what the tongues doing? They were praising God, the wonderful things of God. In verse 11, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Okay? So now we want to establish Holy Spirit was poured upon the church. Yeah? It was to become nurses unto Christ. Yeah? To be first in Jerusalem. Yeah? then uh, Samaria, and outer parts of the earth. So we see here that, okay, these people are from the outer parts of the earth. The proselytes that came, yeah, that wanted to do, okay, Pentecost on that day, they heard and they saw right, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. All right? They saw the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And what did they see? Right? Verse 3 says that appeared unto them cloven tongues as of fire and is set upon each of them. Okay? So, when they were baptized, the first church was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Not only were they speaking in tongues, okay? There were Tongues of fire, yeah, upon them. Yeah, why so? For them to see that the gift has been given. It is truly been prophesied and fulfilled. What Jesus said to the disciples, wait, it will be given, right? And the people there were witnesses to see that the Holy Spirit was poured out visibly and audibly yeah, upon the people there. Those who were waiting upon the Lord, they were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Alright? 
So, where's my notes? Haha, <laughs> flew away. Okay, then where else did we see the Holy Spirit come upon the people? Yeah? Let's look to... Okay, just bear with me, right? I'm trying to establish something. Let's go to Acts chapter 8, verse 17. Acts chapter 8, verse 17. Okay, so now we see that, okay, there was apostles that were at Jerusalem. They heard that Samaria, in verse 14, yeah, had received the word of God. So they sent them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then... They laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Right? And when Simon saw that through the link of hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So again, we see that this a visible, okay, or audible. Yeah? When we see that when the apostles laid hands, yeah, they received the Holy Spirit. So, what was it? Yeah. If we understand, okay, it is definitely the tongues, speaking in tongues. All right. Now, <clears throat> compares to Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter 4, the Holy Spirit was given to the apostles, yeah. And now we see the apostles were already been empowered they are going out to be witnesses and they are sharing the good news yeah and those who have not received the holy spirit yeah they laid hands upon them to receive the holy spirit so we see all right this is jerusalem okay this is samaria like the bible stated Acts chapter 1, in Jerusalem you will be witnesses for me. That was Acts chapter 2, where in Jerusalem, Holy Spirit fell. In Acts chapter 8, we see that in Samaria, in Samaria, Holy Spirit was given yeah, to the disciples in Samaria. Now, <clears throat> let's go to Acts chapter 10. Yeah? Acts chapter 10, many of us know yeah, this story, yeah, of a man named Cornelius, a godly man, right, a centurion, yeah. So, he was given a vision, yeah, and um, Peter was also given a vision, right. Um, yeah, they were supposed to also receive the promise of God. So, we see now, the Holy Spirit is given to non-Jews. Okay? First, we see Jews given. Secondly, we see mixed Jews. We know that Samaria are Jews, okay, that have mixed blood. Thirdly, now in chapter 10, we see that these are people who are not of Jewish descent. And the Holy Spirit will also be given upon the non-Jews, yeah, and Cornelius is one of the first that is recorded, yeah, that was given the Holy Spirit, yeah, and he was the one, all right, that was looking upon God, searching for God, doing things of godly conscience and uh, doing good arms, yeah, helping the poor. Now, how did, how did Cornelius receive the Holy Spirit? Was it that Peter laid hands on Cornelius to receive the Holy Spirit? 
Now let's look at it. Uh, verse 44. All right. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all of them, okay, who were Cornelius and the household, because that the Gentiles also was given or poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Verse 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Okay. Now, we see here in Acts chapter 8, yeah, laying of hands to receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. In Acts chapter 10, there was no laying of hands, but the Holy Spirit was poured upon the people. So what are we trying to establish here? We are trying to establish that there is all right, no biblical truth all right, that only through laying of hands will a person be baptized in the Holy Spirit. All right, okay. So evidence shows that even a person that has not been laid hands on can also receive the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So now, so let's go back to Acts chapter nineteen. All right, and we see here, yeah, that Paul asked them. Have you received the Holy Spirit? They said no. So what did Paul do? All right, Paul baptized them by laying on the hands, and the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So what does this tell us? Yeah, God does work miraculously. Yeah, God does work miraculously. Yeah, He can do whatever. He wants, whether it be laying of hands or whether it be just baptism without laying of hands, one can receive the Holy Spirit. So, it is probably not right yeah, when we say that if you are not laid hands upon, yeah, you do not have the Holy Spirit, number one. Number two, is also yeah not right to say yeah or if you are only baptized in the name of Jesus only then will you receive the true holy spirit yeah so these are the things okay we need to ponder and not divide ourselves but be open to the workings of the holy spirit yeah, because we know in 1 Corinthians 12 that when we believe every Christian is baptized and we are given the Holy Spirit yeah, and the Holy Spirit indwells us because the one that baptizes is the Holy Spirit. Yeah, it is not Man, man can be a conduit, can be a vessel. Yeah. So, as I said earlier, any passage in the Bible, yeah, must not contradict other passages. Okay, in the Bible, in other books itself. So we cannot put a doctrine on this a chapter, but we have to put several chapters, several books and put it all together and understand what really it means. Okay? So, <clears throat> let's continue on, yeah? Verse 8. And, they, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. When divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one. 
Tyrena. So we see that Paul went to the synagogue, right, and spoke boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. Yeah, but there were those who were hardened, did not believe, and spoke evil, yeah, of that way, yeah, of that Christian way, of that Christian life, yeah. So Paul departed from them, right? And what did he do? He found a place in a school run by one named Tyrannus. Now, um, historians have written, yeah, that Tyrannus only used the school right in the morning. That was from eight to eleven, yeah. So from eleven to four, the school was empty, and Paul, yeah, used that time in the school of Tyrannus, yeah, to teach and to dispute, yeah, with the Jews daily about the kingdom of God. Now, you see how Paul, yeah does not stop, does not give up. Though he was evicted, though the people rejected him and his message, he stayed on. He found a place. Yeah? And he continued daily to teach the people about Christ, his death, his resurrection. Yeah? Daily, he said that. Yeah? Do you know that Paul is a tent maker. Yeah. Paul put God first before his income. Paul did the work of the evangelist. He worked of a preacher. But he also was a tent maker. He was in the tent making business. But daily from 11 to 4, when he can do yeah some business he took this hour and spread the gospel and after that yeah he went on yeah to do his tent making anyway why was 11 to 4 yeah free yeah in those days it was very humid and hot yeah, and the people there, yeah, did not want to do anything, yeah, in the hot sun. So what they did by eleven, yeah, to twelve, they would have stopped working, yeah, they would have rested in their houses, yeah, they did not do any business. Business was closed from eleven to four. So Paul used this opportunity, yeah, yeah, to to, to teach. And those who were willing yeah, to lose their sleep, those who were willing to lose their comfort, came to hear from Paul. Yeah? It is also understood that these people will only start enjoying life again after fall. Yeah? And throughout the evening to the wee mornings, because that time, the temperature was cooler. Yeah. So we see that whenever we want to go after the things of God, there must be sacrifices yeah, on the teacher's part and also the student's part. Like today, tonight, this afternoon, you put away your things to come and listen to the word of God. And uh, may I congratulate you, yeah, for one thing, you know, to understand the things of God in a deeper way. Verse 10, and this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dealt in Asia heard the word, the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. So we see that, okay, Paul continued there, yeah, for another two years, so that all that dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus. 
both Jews and Greeks. Verse 11, And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and evil spirits went out of them. <coughs> now, this is what we call right, okay, unusual, yeah, unusual miracles or special miracles. I do not know what your translation puts it in verse eleven, yeah. So here it says that it's special miracles. It is not miracle, but it's a special miracle. It's very different. It is a special miracle. All right. So. Okay, what God did, yeah, through actually the body of Paul, yeah, was a special miracle. He says that from his body, yeah, were brought handkerchiefs or aprons. So actually, what are these handkerchiefs? It's not those handkerchiefs, okay, that um, yeah, yeah, we use that, yeah. Um, now, Paul, being a carpenter, sorry, not a carpenter, sorry, being a tent maker, yeah, um, yeah, he works, he sweats, so he has this, um, it's like a head band, all right, yeah, or a towel, okay, that he will put upon his, on his head or on his shoulders, you know, so just to wipe off his sweat, yeah, and, uh, you know, people, okay, things, okay, that this can produce miracles. So what they do, okay, um, they stole, yeah, from this uh, Paul, okay, his, uh, these sweatbands, they call it sweatbands, yeah, these headbands, yeah, and placed it on the people that were sick. And true enough, okay, these people were healed. And so also the aprons, you know aprons, yeah? Um, yeah, those who do cooking, you know, those who are in uh, the butchery, yeah, for you to be free, yeah, from the debris, yeah, from all the things, okay, that are uh, things, okay, that are messy, okay. If let's say you are a butcher, and then uh, yeah, definitely there will be blood splatting all over, okay, when you are doing uh, tent making. Yeah, there's a lot of things there, so they have an apron, yeah, to cover the body. So even those apron, yeah taken from Paul's body, right? They were used and we saw miracles there. So, uh, are we, okay, just uh, from this passage, say that, okay, this is how God works miracles? Yeah. <coughs> well, miracles work when you believe in the things that you do that will bring a miracle. Miracles are something, okay, that somehow, one, God may have put in your heart. By doing this, you will see a miracle. Miracles can happen, yeah, because out of the grace of God. God sees your faith and God rewards that faith. Okay, so <clears throat> there is, we can't put miracles or God producing miracles in a box, in a formula. God's God cannot be put in a box. God cannot be understood by a formula. Our mind, being on earth, cannot comprehend the things of heaven. We, being on earth, yeah, cannot comprehend the heavenly things. But know this for sure, that God does what He does because of His love, his grace and his compassion. Now, let's look in the miracles that Jesus performed. One miracle, yeah, concerning blindness, yeah. Does Jesus always use the same method to cure the blind? We see no, yeah. One, Jesus will tell them, okay, um, touch their eyes, all right, and they're healed, yeah. One. Jesus will put what? Even mud upon their eyes and ask them to go and wash. Right? So, we cannot put God in a formula, which some people do, 
And we, by doing so, thinking that we have a formula for healing, we have a formula for deliverance, we put God in a box, and it is not to be so. We need the Holy Spirit yeah, to allow creative miracles, to allow things that will be able to glorify God. Same thing as we saw. Yeah. The Holy Spirit was not given only by the laying of hands. It can also be given individually or it can be given right, as a whole. So we cannot put God or the workings of God in a box. All right. So <clears throat> things that we do today, yeah, it may become superstitious, yeah, if it's not from the word of God or it is not from the inspiration of God. But again, we do not put God in a box. Sometimes God asked okay, us to do this, but we do not follow what other people do. Yeah? But even so, when we do that and we find miracles, we find results, it does not mean that this is the way. The way is always God's way not our way, not our thinking. Yeah? So, there is no way that we can classify this as this is only the biblical way. This is only God's way. We are limiting God in that sense. Yes, remember, there was one, this woman, yeah? she had this uh, continuous flow of blood yeah, for 12 years. Yeah? And what did she do? She thought in her mind, yeah, if I could only touch yeah, the hems of the garments of Jesus, I shall be healed. This is what she believes. And she goes out to do it. Right? And God rewards her for her faith. Yeah? Because this is her faith for healing. Will it be done for others? Well, it is a question mark, right? We do not know. So many um, examples in the, the Bible, yeah? Different miracles, different ways of healing. We see two people who are bedridden. They are in the houses, yeah? And um, the people that were concerned for them came to find Jesus. Yeah, one says, Jesus, okay, please heal my servant who is in the house. And Jesus says, okay, all right, I will come with you. He says, do not come. You do not need to come. Just say the word and my servant shall be healed. Another comes, yeah, and Jesus says he wants to go with him. What? we are trying to establish here that is no right way or wrong way of attaining results. It is your faith and my faith what you believe. And that faith must come from Christ. That faith must come believing in Christ. Alright? It has to come from God and not from man. It comes from man, it will fail. But that being said, even when it comes from man, God will have grace and mercy and compassion upon the people. You see, all these miracles sounds absurd, sounds um, unusual, yeah. But God rewards their faith. We see again, there was this paralytic, yeah, that was on a bed, yeah. They wanted Jesus to heal, but when they came to the house. The house was already surrounded by so many people. They did not give up. What did they do? Yeah. They went to the side of the of the house, okay, climbed upon it, yeah, broke yeah, the roof. So that okay, they could lower his friend down into where Jesus was. Now, was it right, you know, for someone to break into someone's house? Okay, yeah, breaking, damaging property, 
so that you can get to Jesus. Okay, Jesus did not look okay about how the things were done. Jesus was looking at the faith for us to be able to receive miracles. It is by faith. When you believe, you receive. So we see that even evil spirits, okay, yeah, went out from them. Just using the handkerchief and the aprons, evil spirits went out of them. Now this is all very unusual miracles, okay, yeah, that was uh, done during the time of Paul in Asia. Verse 13, we see, Certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them, which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preaches. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and a chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, Paul, I know, but who are you? The man in whom the evil spirit was, leaped on them, overcame them, prevailed against them, so that they fled out of the house naked and wounded. <laughs> so we see here, one who sees these miracles, who has formulated that it is the name of Jesus, okay, that these miracles are being wrought. So they use this formula. <laughs> well, what happens? Okay, they were overpowered. Yeah, it is again foolish to do things when we see, we think we have that formula and hoping that formula will bring results. Yeah, this is a man made thinking. When you see miracles that happen in the Bible, it is always, yeah, one that is out of of need, out of desperation, that God sees that desperation, God sees your faith, and He rewards it. We see that these sons of Sceva, yeah, they were trying, okay, to have authority over the evil spirits, but they did not have the Jesus that Paul preaches. They believed by using the name of Jesus. Yeah, these spirits will bow down to them, but they must understand. Yeah, it is Jesus, yeah, who will cast out these demons. Yeah, and the people that have authority are the people that are following and walking right with Jesus. So he says, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who? Are you so the evil spirit, yeah, leaped on them, overcame them, yeah, and uh, fled naked and wounded. 17. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks which was dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them, and the name of Jesus was magnified. So it's not just about you know knowing the name of Jesus, that yeah, we can. Okay, overpower a, an evil spirit. We need to have a relationship with God. So, those who are dabbling yeah, into this, yeah, please understand, yeah, let God do His work. We, today, as for me, right, formally doing deliverance yeah, uh, massively. Today, I do not look for demons. I do not look for devils to cast out. If they manifest, then we use the authority yeah, given to us in the name of Jesus, we cast them out because we have greater things to do. The Holy Spirit is given to us to be witnesses for Him. And what witness? To share the message of salvation. That is the call, calling of every Christian. The calling of a Christian is to be witnesses unto Jesus wherever you are, starting at your home, at your office, yeah, where you stay. Be a witness. The Holy Spirit that indwells in you has empowered you 
to share the message of truth, the message of love, the message of grace. So, <clears throat> exorcism is nothing, okay, that uh, if we are not to take it lightly, not to take it lightly, yeah, yeah. We don't see, okay, that Jesus and his disciples, okay, went looking, you know, for all this. Yeah. People that were besieged by these evil spirits were brought to them. Yeah. And they cast them out. Yeah. While they were preaching and teaching the word of God. While they were teaching and preaching the message of salvation. So, do not be distracted. Yeah. In being a witness for Christ. Go and share the good news. So because of this incident, yeah, so many of them came to Jesus Christ. Yeah. Because these people, yeah, as we know, three years ago when Paul preached to them, they were hardcore. They did not receive the message. And Paul endeavored day and night, yeah. For three years. Do you know, brothers and sisters in Christ, that people who need to see miracles to come to Christ are the ones that are hardened. They are so blessed yeah, that they finally saw the truth. But it was through a miracle that they believed in Jesus Christ. Now again... <laughs> Believing just in a miracle does not constitute one is saved. Salvation is understanding the message yeah, that it is we are sinners. Yeah, we have a debt to pay to our maker and creator. Now, if those debts are not met, those debts all right, are not paid, then we will yeah, be condemned to hell. Yeah, miracles does not okay constitute one turning to Christ for salvation. Miracles that causes one to turn to Christ is yeah the steps to salvation. I myself one okay that went through exorcism many many years ago so that I accepted Christ as Lord and Savior because I saw okay, that Christ was a mighty God, that He could defeat okay, many, many gods okay, that I prayed to or many, many gods that my people prayed to. And I believed because He was a hero in my eyes. He could defeat all. My God, now, was that salvation? I put it to you, beloved brothers and sisters in Christ. It is not salvation. Yeah? Salvation is when you understand that you are a sinner yeah? and you need repentance. Turning away from sin and asking God to forgive all your sins. That is true salvation. So it took me another three months yeah, to understand that truth. Yeah? Though at that time when I was saved, yeah, I was immediately so zealous for God yeah, and I was also yeah, helping out. But for that three months, I did not understand about Jesus' death. I only saw victory in the name of Jesus. When the name of Jesus was used okay, on demon-possessed people, people were getting healed. Again, there is this caution that some in the church, if they do not know the truth of God, the truth of salvation, they are still not saved. 
though they go to churches, though yeah, they attend right, Bible studies, if they do not continue on, yeah, they may lose it. Apollos was one eloquent in the scriptures, but he only stopped at the baptism of repentance and not at the baptism of salvation. We saw in the previous chapter, Lydia was also one a God-fearing woman. Yeah? When Paul came yeah, and explained to her, then only she understood. So praise God that God sees our heart. And uh, when we have not come yeah, to that full understanding of salvation, God will definitely bring people into your midst and my midst to bring us to understand the true message of salvation. If Apollos was haughty, he was proud, and he says to Aquila and uh, Priscilla, I know what I am teaching and what I am preaching. You do not need to teach me. So Apollos may have lost his salvation. Because salvation is only in the name of Jesus. Yeah? So God uses all his vessels to convince us, those who are hard-hearted. We need convincing. We need sometimes, okay, hard knocks to open our hearts, to open our eyes. Yeah? So that's why, okay, we have various incidents okay, of how God works. And that is good because we cannot put God in a box. We cannot put God in a box. Now, so I do hope right, that we understand that some of our friends in the churches, yeah, we, we don't fall up on them. Though they may come to churches, yeah, just as a religious worship, yeah, not understanding truly the truth, they may also not be saved. Yeah? Some are too busy to come to church. Some given their life to Christ, but they have not been followed up. It is our duty, brothers and sisters in Christ, to reach out to them right, and to make sure Okay, that their salvation is on firm ground. Now, verse 18, And many that believed came, confessed and showed their deeds. They renounced what they were practicing. And what were they practicing? Okay, many of them also used yeah, divination, curious arts. All right? They brought all these books together burned them before all men and counted the price of them and found it to be 50,000 pieces of silver. So we see yeah, that these people were convicted. Yeah? They threw all their gods away, the same like yours truly. When I came to Christ, when I followed Jesus, I threw away all my gods. Yeah? I threw away all those books, those chants, all but again. The question is, was I saved? Yeah? I was on the way yeah, to being saved. <laughs> but I was not saved. Because of the hardness of my heart. Yeah? I was yeah, an atheist. I believed in myself. I believed that yeah, I could carve out all right, riches for myself, which I did yeah, in my early years. But God removed all those. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, because... I did not know the truth. I was chasing the world yeah, and putting my hopes yeah, on making tons of money. So, please let this message be clear. There are people in your church, yeah, in my church, yeah, that comes to the church services, but they still do not have the truth of salvation. So these people came and said, wow, they burned all their curious us. Wow, they burned. But do you think that some of them 
if they do not know the truth, if they did not continue on, will they be saved? No, my brothers and sisters, only the truth saves us. But God in His grace will always open up doors for us to be saved. Same as yours truly. Yeah? God opened up my eyes to understand that it is only Jesus' blood on the cross that can wash away all my sins. Verse 20, So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Verse 21, After these things were ended, Paul purposed in the Spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, After I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent to Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed on in Asia for a season. So why did Paul stay on? Yeah, If these people have mightily shown that they have forsaken their foreign gods, they have burned all these curious arts, it is a mighty victory for Christ. But Paul stayed on because he knew okay, that it could be a temporal joy. Matthew 13 tells us yeah, of the seed that falls on four types of ground. Yeah? One, when the seed was sown, yeah, it fell on the wayside and the birds came and eat them up. Second, there was this seed that was thrown on this stony ground. Yeah? It grew for a short while, but because it has no roots, it dried up, it withered, it died. The third seed okay, that fell upon the soil yeah, that was grown with weeds, it grew, but it was strangled yeah, by the weeds around it. It was strangled yeah, by the temptations, the distractions of the world. And the fourth, the fourth ground was one that was on fertile ground. One okay, that grew 30, 60, 100 fold. The Bible specs tell us, if we do not understand this parable, how else can we understand all parables? It is imperative that we understand some people receive Christ momentarily yeah, and they fall away. So Paul stayed on to make sure yeah, that there will be no fallouts. Those who fervently accepted Christ, they will be followed up. Though Paul was an evangelist, he was also a pastor. Wow, really. He always has the heart for the churches he plans. And he will go back after a few missionary journeys, he will go back to those churches that he first planted and, and see their growth. And if there yeah, were wrong doctrine being preached, he will go all out and tell them and expose these false teachers. The heart of Paul. The heart of Paul. All right? Um, let us um, close with prayer. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you for the writings of the Acts of the Apostles. We thank you for the teachers that have taught us the right things, the true things that we should understand from the writings of Paul and uh, what Paul means yeah, when he says this and does that, oh God. Lord, we truly need you to guide us so that we do not go astray following teachings of men, oh God. Lord, I also pray tonight if the, there are teachings from men, uh, from yours truly, that does not fit biblically in your truth. Let it not fall on good soil. Lord, let it be removed immediately and completely in the name of Jesus, O God. Lord, we just pray that every word spoken that is from you, yeah, it will bear fruit, 30, 60, and 100. Lord, we thank you for all those that have come. Bless those ears that were open, yeah, to hear 
and to learn and to understand. And Father, I pray for all of us. May you continue to lead us and guide us through the Holy Spirit given to us, that indwelling in us, that they be the only teacher that teaches your truth. We thank you, we praise you in Jesus' name. We ask and pray. Amen.